Hello and welcome to the three-time award-winning Tough Girl podcast, which is all about motivating and inspiring you while increasing the amount of female role models in the media. I'm your host, Sarah Williams. Throughout the month of March, the Tough Girl podcast is being sponsored by Innovate as part of the March Daily Mile Challenge, which is what it sounds like running one mile every day in March. You can find out more via my social media at Tough Girl Challenges and on the website, toughgirlchallenges.com. We're speaking to a wide range of runners over the coming weeks with new episodes going live every Tuesday and Thursday at 7am at UK time. Innovate is a footwear, clothing and equipment brand for committed trail and off-road runners, fitness athletes and adventure-seeking hikers who push boundaries and stretch limits. It's a British company based in the Lake District. I've been working with Innovate since 2019 and wear all of their gear when I go hiking or training. You can use the discount code TOUGHGIRL20 to get 20% off your next purchase. Hi, my name is Lucia Bülow. I live in Switzerland. I live in the east part, more at the mountains, so I can train really well and have a good amount of nature around me. For a living, I am a social worker. I work at the company and help other people. So yeah, that's my life. Did you grow up with any siblings and were your parents quite sporty and outdoorsy? Yeah, I have uh, one bigger brother and two bigger sisters, so I was the youngest. I believe the whole family was really sporty. We skiing really early, maybe at five or six. Uh, I was the first time on my skis. And I have a lot of uncles and other family members. They are really good skiers. (laughs) So uh, I grew up really good with sport. When did you start doing more running? Yeah, I believe I was always a runner in my earliest years as well. So I had an athletic background. I was running 10K or 5,000 meters in my uh, earlier years. But then I worked as a cook and then have to work in the evening or sometimes at night, more in the night. So you can always run. You can run early in the mornings at midnight or whatever. So you don't have this structure. You have to go at 6 p.m. or at 8 a.m. or something to go anywhere. So that was really easy for me for training and then I came a little bit more with this trail running and mountain running so I believe that was the start of my uh, running career. Do you remember your first race your first proper race and what that was like? I believe my first race was a half marathon but this was on the roads so it was more flat than uh, mountain stuff so that was my real first race. How did it go? Not that good. (laughs) (laughs) I was a rookie. Yeah, I'm a rookie now as well. But in my earlier years, I just run. And don't think about eating. Don't think about pacing and all this this stuff. So I just go. So I, I blow up. (laughs) <laughs> you like, oh, I was going to say, did you hit the wall? And did you, did, you, did you finish the race? I finished, but I walked the race. <laughs> it is fascinating because you always learn lessons from these experiences, whether it's pacing yourself, whether it's the nutrition. Do you train with a coach? Do you, How do you train for races? No, not anymore. I had a coach. I had a, maybe you know her. It was Ellie Greenwood. Yeah. From, yeah, from England as well. So, so from some years ago, I trained with her. I learned really much from her. But uh, since, I don't know, three years, maybe I train by my own because it's better. I, it's not so stressful for me. So I have to work and so I can carry up. I have a good day. I try something faster or um, steeper or something. So like heel repeats, but when I have a bad day, I just go and run. And I think that's better for me than I have to go with a coach. They say, okay, now you have to do this and this and this. So it's 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 more easier for me. But I learn a lot, really a lot from Ellie. Ellie did, she came on the Tough Girl podcast, actually. It must have been quite a few years ago now. I need to have, a, have another catch up with her. One of the races that you've both run is the Western States 100 mile endurance race. Right. Would you like to share more about this race and how you got your place for it? I'm a lucky girl because I run Western State now 
three times. So uh, <laughs> the first time I ran it 2016, I had only one ticket in the lottery and they got me. So I have to run. And then 2016, that was my first run. I finished, but I believe that was the hardest thing I ever did. I had so much pain. I didn't train that much for this race. I had 27 hours and really I ran without a pacer and the whole night I was walking. Maybe for 30K, I need eight hours. And if you know Western States, it's not a steep race. So it's a lot of runnable stuff. So you have to run, but I I couldn't run. It was so hard and I, I was so much in pain. I remember it was like yesterday. That was really so hard. And then after this race, I finished and I was so happy. And I had always told me I have to come back. So I trained for it. I trained at this time for a meet with Ellie Greenwood. And then I got the chance for a golden ticket race. If you uh, are first or second at the golden ticket race, you can go back to Western States. So I did the Georgia Death Race. That was 2019, no, 18. I'm not sure anymore. And uh, then I won the race, so I got back to Western States. And then, yeah, I have the chance to do it better. And I train really for, because it's one of a race you go with a lot of passion, because, because it's so so much history there, so much friendly people. It's an old 100 mile, one of the oldest in the world, an oldest in America. And yeah, it, it's not just a race. It's really so much more than a race, Western State. So I want to go there and uh, give my best I can. But at this day, at my second time, I don't have my best day. I had some stomach problems. I don't eat very well. And uh, yeah, I, I got better. I was around 20 hours, but I was at the finish line. And I really know that I can go this race faster. So I have to go again. And this, this was this summer. And this summer, I believe I had a really good race. So I was at the finish line around 18 hours and I believe eight minutes or something. And at the finish, I told myself, okay, that was a really good day. And I'm, I'm, I was really proud of my race. I was at the finish line and have so much memories. So now I believe I got this. I love that journey. But, you know, so the first time you did it, 27 27 hours, you know, a lot of walking, a lot of time on your feet, sort of finding it super, you know, the hardest thing that you'd ever done. You know, the second time, that is a big improvement, you know, knocking off seven hours training with Ellie. And then this time coming in at 18, 18 hours, eight minutes and 27 seconds and feeling so proud of yourself. Yeah. Is awesome. What was your strategy? What were your tactics to, to complete the race? My tactic was really, I want to go not too slow at the beginning. So I want to go with the faster ladies, but not too fast. I need my own pace. Then I keep going and, and I feel at the beginning a little bit tired, maybe of the jet lag. And I wasn't sure, but I felt a little bit tired. So I go a little bit slower than maybe first I thought for me. I think after the slow section, maybe the first 50K, I felt much better and it was good. I was a little bit slower at the beginning but because then I can move on. And after Robinson Flat, so the first 50K, I move on and uh, I run really well, always mostly alone. I don't run with other people so much, mostly really alone. And I... Yeah, I catching up some other people, some other ladies, and I had really fun. And that was my main priority of this. I want to have fun as long as possible. Because, you know, when you are running for so many hours, you know, sometimes they, the pain comes earlier or later, or you have other struggles. So I want to have fun how much or how long I can go 
uh, really well. So, and I had I had a really good time. I had uh, two friends from Germany. There was my crew, and I believe we have a, always a good time together when we uh, catching up together. And uh, yeah, we have a little strategy. Just keep smiling. Go one through in the other, and just keep it simple. I feel as though I can hear you smiling when you're talking about that race and the amount of fun that you had, which is so lovely. You mentioned that you do run alone quite a lot. And what do you think about what's going through your head? I mean, my mind was maybe more, okay, just enjoy now the moment. Just enjoy now where you are. Don't, Don't go with my mind in 10 minutes or maybe what is in an hour or something. Just stay at the moment and try the best now you can have in the moment. Sometimes I remember just like this, because you are so fast with your paths in in other areas. And sometimes it's not so good when you're racing because, oh, I know now the canyons are hot and the canyons coming in front of me. So you you run maybe slower, but that's not good. So you just stay at the moment. And sometimes you have just remind yourself, just stay there and nothing else. So really just focus on being in the present and just thinking about what, what you're doing. Absolutely. And you mentioned on the second time that you did the race that you had quite a few stomach problems and you sort of you didn't want to eat and I'd love just to hear more about you know what do you eat when you're running you know what type of foods are you doing gels you know what do you consume either before the race during the race and after the race normally as before the race I eat like normal just maybe one or two days before I don't eat some uh fancy stuff like beans maybe i don't eat beans or maybe not that much fruits or milk i'm usually a vegetarian the whole um since years as the whole time i'm a vegetarian i don't eat meat and fish but uh, maybe one or two uh, days before the race i look about milk and maybe some eggs i i don't eat that because it's better for my stomach and uh during the race, I eat like normal stuff like the gels, like uh, hydration, sport drinks, or I eat some uh, salt or potatoes. Sometimes it's different. Sometimes it works really good if you eat potatoes with salt. And next time, maybe the same race, it doesn't work. So you have... You have to uh, change your nutrition strategy during a race. So you you can start with your normal stuff like uh, gels or hydration stuff or whatever. And if you feel sick or your stomach is not that good, you have to change that at the moment. So try something different. I eat mostly then bread or sometimes I eat I eat a little bit of cheese, something salt, salty stuff like chips maybe, but not that much fat, and 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 it works. And it not works. I have to try something other. So that's my strategy during a race. And after a race, always pizza and beer. Oh, that sounds good. You de- you deserve that pizza after completing a hundred mile race. Oh yes. <laughs> How does your body recover? So, you know, 100 miles, especially doing it at the pace that you run at, what happens to your body? Does it take a while for your body to to get back? Do you you take time or do you have a break, a rest from running? Do you get a massage? You know, what do you do for the rest and recovery? Yeah, for rest and recovery, always I take some days rest about from running, sure, because you have uh, so much inflammation and maybe you have other other problems at your body. So I always take my time to getting back to running. So first, I maybe I take an ice bath or uh, I go something easy, bicycle or just a really easy hike or something like this. I usually do always a massage during the whole year, every second week, for sure. So that's a normal process for me. I think it's better for your blood and blood flowing. So I need always for the recovery as well. But um, I do maybe a week without running. Maybe sometimes I two weeks. It, it depends on my body 
This year I did two 100 miles. I did uh, Istria, 100 miles of Istria in uh, April. And after this race, I had only a few days without running and I felt really good after this. So I could train after the race really well, maybe a week after. So that was a good. And after Western State, I had more problem because of all the downhill, I believe. There is uh, 7,000 meters of downhill during the race. So I had some psoas problems and I need more time after this race for me and for the recovery. So it depends. How do you feel? Just go with your feelings and look after your body. Don't hurry up for other training because you need time always. And eat well, take in some socializing stuff with friends, maybe during Uh, The training before, you don't meet so much uh, friends. So during if after, take your time and then slowly going back. Do you take supplements? Not really supplements. It's just for my stomach, some probiotica. So like this, but not, not supplements. On your Instagram account, you have the words, the future is unwritten. What do you mean by that? Is that is that like a mantra? Is that words that you live your life by? What does that mean? Every morning you have your choice. Sure, we have to work. We have to check our bills and all this stuff. But every morning you have your choice. You can stand up early before you go to work. You can run or you can training or whatever. Or you you just if I'm for you, I sleep and go maybe later. But maybe later you can go because the, you have too much work, your family, your children or whatever, or want something for you. So, But at the end of the day, you don't know what is tomorrow. Maybe, maybe it's the same day like the day before, but you have your choice. So you can go whatever you want and change that what you want. And that means the future is unwritten. Nobody tells you what you have to do. I say what I want or I have the opportunity to do something. If I don't like my job, I have to quit and find something other. But I have this opportunity. So that what it means the future is unwritten. In the future, what race would you like to run? Do you have a dream race that you've looked at and you thought, you know what, one day I will take on that challenge? I really hope one day I can race Hard Rock 100. That's a race in Colorado. It's also a huge mountain race with, I believe, 10,000 of meters up and down with big mountains and big playgrounds and I really hope one day I am there. I'm now this year the fifth time in the lottery so it's not so easy to get in but yeah wish me luck. I will wish you luck and I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. I would love for you to get into that race. Thanks it, it, would, it would be really fun. <laughs> Lutz, you are an Innovate ambassador and I'm working with Innovate for March, doing the March Daily Mile Challenge, which is all about encouraging new people to get out running, to run one mile every day. Mm -hmm. I would love to know, what would your advice be for new runners who are just starting out? Apart from just do it, just get outside and run. What other piece of advice would you like to share? And that could be anything in any area. Yeah, I know it's not always easy just go out for for uh, 30 minutes or whatever because yeah, life happens and we have so much to do always and sometimes yeah, it's dark or it's rainy and you don't want to go but how do you feel after that? If you go out doesn't matter 5 minutes, 10 minutes, how do you feel after that when you go when you come back? Just remember this feeling. If you re- really remember this feeling and you're feeling really good, mostly you're feeling really good after this, you, you go the next day. Sometimes just go to your neighbors, go back. Just the little things, it's better than nothing. So if you have friends, uh, you can go for a visit or you can go out for maybe an hour or sharing together a trail. Try it. Try something new. It's, it's, it's better than just to be at home and uh, don't work for this. So it's easier. You have something with you. It doesn't matter 
which person, but when it helps, it's always easier with friends. Have you ever lost your running mojo where you've ever just thought, oh, do you know what? I just don't feel like going for a run today or I'm just, no, I'm just sort of a bit over running. Yeah, sometimes maybe you ask or I ask me if I really want it because if you want to be good at our sports, you have to do a lot for this. And um, you have to, to train a lot. And that's many hours on your foot. And sometimes I really lost my focus I, I'm, or I really lost my passion about this. And then I remember why I do it. I do it because I want to go out. I want to go in the mountains. I want to see something. I want to share something. I want to see sunrise. I want to see the sunsets. I want to have some really good moments. And that makes me happy. I don't need a lot of stuff or fancy, fancy stuff. Maybe I don't, I don't need cars or I don't know, whatever, or a lot of clothing. I don't need that. I want to have happy moments. And that's all these sunsets and all this sunrise makes me happy. So then I remember at this time and I go out. With, with passion again. So that's my running mojo. I have quite a few different pairs of Innovate running trainers. Do you have a favorite pair that you like to wear? It depends. Uh, sometimes I like just uh, without cushion a lot. So an easy sample shoe, like maybe a, a tarot or something. I like this because it's just a simple shoe that works. Also the, um, the graphene so it works really good. And if you know where I live a little bit, we have all. We have just easy roads. We have good single trails. We have technical stuff. We have alpine stuff. And it works everywhere, this shoe. So I, I like them really much. And if I go longer, I like maybe a little bit more cushion. So I more the park claw. Even it's more a road trail shoe. But I believe that's one of the best shoe I ever tried. Because... They are really well at so much underground. What trainers did you wear for the Western States 100? Also the Park Law. Park Law, yeah. Yeah. What advice would you have uh, for sort of our more experienced runners? What would you like to say? If you uh, go the first time a little bit longer, so maybe a 50K or, or whatever, you have to train like maybe like a marathon because it's not much longer than a marathon but it is the 50k in the mountains so you have some words uh, between it's always time on feet that counts so if you go out and you have time for a five hour run even you walk or hike much more than you run it's better than nothing so go hiking go be outside train as much as possible and if you go up with your mileage or distance you want to go for a 100k or 100 mile always you have to run more but it's not only running i'm a big believer of strength training i do for sure two times in a week sometimes more it depends on the season I do a lot of strength training. Sometimes I do crossfit. I was a crossfitter in my earlier years. So I like that really much to keep pushing my running. And it helps to get me strong and staying strong. And I, I'm i much injury freer than other persons because I do some strength training. It's so important if you mileage up your uh, race or your usual uh, training weeks maybe from a 50k training week till a 100k training week you need a, a base and this base it's so good if you had a opportunity for strength training so enjoy your strength class or a crossfit class or uh, maybe a functional training class or what, whatever you have at your neighborhood so that's always good and then you have to run a lot, sure. If you go up with your mileage, you have to run a lot. It's also good you do some bicycle because then you don't have so much pressure on your bones and muscles and damage on your muscles. So keep up with this. Maybe you have some winter access. I don't know. 
where the people live. But in the winter time, I do a lot of ski mountaineering. So I am um, walking up with my skis the mountain, uh, drive the mountain down and do this the whole time. And that's a really good base for running as well, because it's not this uh damage of the downhill running because you drive with your ski stones but you also also have a really good training for your heart so keep it up some good works uh, with your skis always always works luke i'd love for you to share your social media links where can people connect with you how can they follow along with your future running and adventures i have an instagram account and there is lots since years, as a L U Z dot <laughs> and then since years, but the the short one because uh, my, that's my nickname. Normally, my whole name is Lucia, and but since I am a child, uh, the people around me tell me, "Yeah, hey, hi, Lutz." So I'm there, and just Lutz, just Lutz. I love it. Thank you so much for being such an inspiration for other women out there and encouraging more women to get out running. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciated that too. Thank you very much. And uh, it was really nice to meeting you. Hey Tribe, I really hope you enjoyed the episode with Lucia. What an incredible inspiration. I loved hearing about her race at the Western States 100. And one of the things which actually didn't get mentioned in the Tough Girl podcast episode was that when Lucia ran it in 2022, in that time of 18 hours and eight minutes, she actually came a fourth woman, which is incredible. So everything that we have talked about today will be available in the show notes at toughgirlchallenges.com. Lucia also mentioned being coached by Ellie Greenwood. So we actually spoke with Ellie back in 2016. So quite a few years ago now but you can also listen to Ellie's episode as well even though the episode is from a number of years ago the content is still evergreen and what I mean by that is it's still really really relevant to listen to you can still pick up loads of top tips and loads of advice so please do go back and check out our previous episodes we do actually have a massive back catalog now there's over 600 tough girl podcast episodes which is absolutely huge and I just want to share a little bit more about our next episode that we have coming out on the 21st of March we're going to be speaking with Ingrid Walters, who is a competitive swimmer turned marathon runner who has a PB of two hours, 48 minutes. She's also a breast cancer survivor and she was inducted into the National Black Distance Running Hall of Fame. So I'm just going to share a little bit more information about Ingrid. So Ingrid has loved competitive sports since a young age. Originally swimming was her passion and she began swimming competitively at six years old. She swam throughout high school and attended UCLA, which is a division one school where she swam competitively for two years while studying sociology. After leaving college, Ingrid made the transition from swimming to running and also decided to become an actress, playing lifeguard Cheryl Whelan on Baywatch, as well as having roles on Scandal, Grey's Anatomy, Castle and Parenthood, to name a few. At the age of 47, she ran her fastest marathon ever, two hours, 48 minutes in the 2019 LA Marathon. Ingrid was feeling the strongest and fittest she'd ever been. However, while training for her next challenge, she started to not feel well and after seeing her doctor was diagnosed with breast cancer. Ingrid underwent a double mastectomy and continued to run while undergoing six rounds of chemotherapy as well as radiation. Ingrid is a member of Jane's, an elite women's running group based in LA. It's a really fascinating episode with Ingrid, which I hope you will enjoy. So all of the episodes throughout March are being sponsored by Innovate, inov com, And you can go and visit their website if you're looking to buy any new trainers, running gear, hiking gear, etc. You can use the discount code TOUGHGIRL20, TOUGHGIRL20 to get a 20% discount off what you purchase. I wear all of Innovate's gear for my training, runs and hikes. You will see them on the Tough Girl vlogs and on all of my Instagram stories. And new vlogs are coming out as we speak from the Scottish hikes. So starting with the Outer Hebrides. So I do hope you will enjoy them. But all that's left for me to say is wherever you are, whatever you are doing give it your all give it 110 percent. get after it go for it believe in yourself because i believe in you take care lots of love and i'll speak to you soon bye <laughs>